Okay, thanks for tuning in for another video and in today's video I'm going to have a look at the Seiko 3883 movement which is part of their uh, GFA or Quartz Superior line from the 1970s and uh, it comes from the 38SQ family which all have the same base but uh, the major differences are that the higher end ones have and you'll see that uh, let me just grab a pointer. So the main differences are actually just in that part there. So you'll see on the 3883 it has uh, some little uh, trimmer, uh, trimmer uh, noblets that go on there. And uh, they had a, uh, a higher precision oscillator as well. And on the end there, that is for temperature compensation. So. When you really think about uh, logically how these would work, um, I would say that the way they worked is that they put them together and uh, then tested the the oscillation uh, efficiency or or uh, regularity or whatever you want to call it, um, and then uh, just trimmed out uh, any sort of uh, variations on it so that you could get it as even as possible. Um, while they do say adjusted to six positions, I don't really see how that is particularly relevant on a quartz movement as they don't really experience uh, huge torque, torque differences in different positions, but I guess we'll take their word for it. Um, as for the temperature compensation, I would say that <clears throat> the, the uh, trimmer that they've put on there for the temperature compensation, what they've done is they've just uh, taken the, or put the uh, movement in an oven or something, <clears throat> Excuse me, I've got a frog in my throat, but um, yeah, I think they've probably just put the movement in an oven or something and just tested it across a temperature variation and uh, worked out that that uh, by putting that uh, trimmer on the end there, that just evens it out across uh, uh, lots of variations. So uh, with these, I'll just bring across this guy here as well. So that's the uh, base module of the 38SQ. So I've taken everything off of that one because that's actually uh, why this movement died. So this guy here, if we turn it over, um, you'll see the, uh, the contacts there. So just under that black potting material there is the integrated circuit. So that's just actually inside there. And um, these contacts go out to the um, the rest of the circuit that's on the movement. Now potting the integrated circuit on these would have been uh, would have been a good move at the time. Um, it definitely helps to reduce damage or anything like that. So what we're looking at here is that's basically the stripped down version of the module on the 3883 which is that there. So when the module's assembled, you've got the integrated circuit underneath, which is what we just had a look at there. You've got the uh, trimmers all across there. You've got another trimmer there, and that's the oscillator. So the oscillator is the crystal, and uh, that's the uh, the part of it that um, does all the magic, really, with the with the quartz circuit. So quartz circuits are, are reasonably simple. Um, what they do is the oscillator oscillates. Uh, when you put power on it, that's how that's what quartz crystals tend to do, and uh, then the integrated circuit has some logic on it which divides those oscillations by a known number, and uh, then it sends a signal out once every second to run the uh, micro motor. So it sends a signal out to the coil, the coil gets a magnetic field across it, which then uh, turns the little rotor in there, which makes it tick. So that's, I guess, the the, uh, the idiot's guide to how quartz watches work. But uh, yeah, so we'll just have a look at uh, this one again. So this is part of the replacement movement. So the original movement had a pretty serious battery leak in there and there was just green crust everywhere. And after having a good look at it, uh, I worked out probably the better way to go is just to uh, replace the movement and just pull across the things that are unique to the uh, 3883. So here's the original movement here. So this has already had the module taken off of it. So the module sits in there and uh, you'll see there that's where the battery sits. 
that's the top drain plate so that's going to go over to the other movement as well when I rebuild it then we've got the coil there and if we turn it over you probably can't really see much of the battery damage on here now because I did spend quite a while cleaning it up but it there still is bits of stuff in there which I just can't get to uh, without sort of unriveting the uh, whole thing apart which probably isn't really desirable so you can see there the date side now these have a slightly unusual uh, date side um, so if you have a look there it's pretty conventional um, keyless work setup but this plate here um, which I'll just tip up uh, that plate there there's actually um, a jewel right here uh, it's a clear jewel and this also has uh, all right there it is just there so this plate is uh, adjusted with a cam screw right there so that's to adjust we probably won't be able to see it on camera and it's a little bit fiddly to really show but uh, these actually have adjustment for where the rotor uh, sits inside the uh, the poles of the magnet um, I'm probably not making a whole lot of sense but if you're pulling these things apart you'll sort of understand it a bit better uh, most quartz watches don't have that adjustment these days but what that does is that uh, adjusts the uh, the space between the uh, the rotor and uh, the magnets that surround it or the plates um, that surround it so anyway that sort of makes more sense if you have a problem with the movement so just coming back to it here and uh, I've got it supported in my movement holder for the uh, 44 King Seiko because it is the same size now the first thing I'm just going to take off is just the battery protector so these are made from uh, PTFE so it's basically that Teflon sized uh, plastic and uh, they're quite good because the materials in it it doesn't really uh, react to anything all right so then we've got that off and you can see sort of uh, a little bit inside there now as well so you can see some uh, tightly packed gears and whatnot in there um, that diode just there or capacitor I think it's a capacitor actually um, that is for battery protection and what we'll do now is I'll just take the module off so the modules come off with uh, three screws in total so that's that one there uh, actually two screws I think for this one rather than three now, I'm doing this on a little bit of an angle so it's a bit tricky so now we'll just take that module off and that just comes off as one piece now I'm not going to pull this apart but I'll show some uh, I'll put up some pictures of the interior of uh, what that looks like right here okay so now let's come back across here so that's what we've got left now what I might do now is just take the coil off now the good thing with the coils on these is that they did actually I'm just trying to remember I'm gonna to have to take uh, the top plate off of that first rather than the coil um, yeah okay so that's all right so we're just taking off the top train plate now because the actual the screw for the bottom of the coil is actually hidden under under underneath all that so we'll just take that off now yeah i think as i was saying before the coils on these are quite good because it is uh, wrapped in plastic so that makes it a lot harder to put a screwdriver through it which is usually what kills a lot of quartz watches especially some of the ones where they have the the uh, the coil right next to where the battery is because what happens is someone undoes the battery strap and of course what happens the screwdriver slips and it goes straight through the coil 
and that's the end of the coil so that's the underside of that plate there we've uh, just taken this gear with it the reason this has come off with it is it's uh, the oil that's supposed to be there has uh, turned into uh, turned into a goo so that's just come off you can see the underside there so there's nothing too special under there there's some jewels and uh, you'll see that tiny little thing there see that tiny little jewel on a lever yeah what that does is that's just a, uh, a pull jewel and <clears throat> that just makes sure that uh, when the uh, fourth wheel ticks that well it's an indexing jewel that's the correct term so what that does is it makes sure when the fourth wheel is turning that it will hit the uh, second marker every time accurately so you don't normally see that on the cheaper movements uh, which is why they don't always end up in the same place but with uh, a lot of the more expensive movements they often have a pull jewel on the fourth wheel so we'll put that aside there and come back to this now and these are a bit of a strange construction these movements so they're definitely not typical of a modern quartz movement and I'm just trying to get it in a position where my finger doesn't slip so I can take more bits off so we'll take that one off that, that guy off there so that's the third wheel there and that was a bit sticky as well and that this is the rotor so that comes off and it's actually quite large on these you'll see there it's got uh, some plastic underneath and it's otherwise reasonably typical um, despite being quite large and then you can see the the poles of this here so these work like any sort of electric motor so the uh, module supplies a voltage to the coil which then charges these poles and the uh, magnetism turns that rotor around so it's relatively simple so you can see that there normally the rotor is off to the side and it's not really in the middle of the movement like this is here okay so now I'm just going to take off the coil is just two screws and I'm just going to take that off as a complete unit there that just makes life easy <clears throat> and uh, we haven't really got a whole lot left on here so we're going to need to take off the poles there's a whole bunch of stuff under this as well so that's one pole off and the second pole So you can see there the uh, hacking lever. Just take off the second pole here. So it's just a little bit tricky with uh, the brass tweezers because you can't really put much torque on brass tweezers. There we go. And that's pretty much all that's on the main plate there. So I'll just take off the uh, hacking lever there. Now, that's, there's a spring for this just there, which makes it a little bit tricky. Um, I'm just going to get some Rodico 
just to make sure that doesn't fly off. And I'm just going to use my normal tweezers here. There we go. So we remove one hacking lever. And now I'm going to turn this over and we're going to do the date side. Now the date side on this has already been reasonably disassembled. trying to get a firm fit in the movement holder so we don't have it bouncing all over the place. I think that's as good as it's going to get. So that's what we've got left on the date side. So I'm going to start with the setting lever I think. Alright, that was uh, quite tight. It's uh, stuck. I might just try and get a little screwdriver under there just to lever it up. There we go. And that one's gone. So this guy we don't want to lose, so I'm just going to rotico that and then take it out. And then we'll just take the yoke out. And getting there. take the uh, calendar wheel off. Just fighting with my ghetto lighting system here. It's made out of uh, food containers, aluminium, some uh, cheap LED lamps I bought and a lot of cheapness. There we go. So that's that off. that little plastic bit there. And this is a little bit fiddly. Now the camera is just giving me a heat warning. I'm not really sure why but it's not particularly hot today but I'll try and get this wrapped up. Now Alright, so all we've really got left now is that one more plate on the front there. And there's a few bits and pieces under there. Now, that just comes off with the, the oddball screw there. So it's the, uh, is it right or left handed? I can't remember which way. 
so it is, but it's the opposite of what it should be. And that plate just comes off. I've got that guy there. And finally, the, uh, the cannon pinion, which just sits on a shaft. So there you go, that's it. So, um, yeah, so that's what's inside one of the uh, Quartz Superior or GFA watches. I don't think there's a whole lot of info on these out there, so hopefully someone will find this useful. And uh, yeah, I'll be back again soon with another video, and thank you for watching.